सो जान दो रुक जान दो लहरों में कहीं डूब जाने दो लहरों में कहीं डूब जाने दो मुझसे कहे एक जल परी डूब जाने दो जल में कहीं हा so i was told to make an introduction introduction with with the with a song and that's why i did because i thought that the kids would be really passionate uh, probably more about the music aspect of things than what i do in my boring everyday life uh as a real estate guy uh you know uh, i run a real estate company uh, i'm an architect uh, otherwise so that's what i do back at home uh, from delhi uh, i design buildings i'm expected to so we build a lot of units so i'm expected to think what the consumer is thinking i'm uh, supposed to know what is the future uh, it's very very important do we actually all of us know what the future is do we think uh you know what is the future of whatever we are seeing around us at all times because the future is actually not some a place where we want to get to it's a place which all of us have to create together if you think or if all of us think something's going to happen it's actually going to happen in this world that god has created the universe in a way in the, in which everything that you dream is possible absolutely everything you take your smartphone and you send it back 1000 years back in time and you ask that guy uh you know do you think this is possible he would say you know this is alien where did this thing come from uh but today it is possible it's just about putting everything together we've not we are so so little in our understanding of the universe right now we have absolutely no idea you know what all things can happen aviation happened telecom happened uh the internet happened computers happened so many things happened but they happened because somebody did an experiment and it succeeded and uh you know they put elements together they put uh, materials together they put uh, technology together and they created something out of it um as jim morrison from the doors you know, used to uh, you know sort of say open up the wind open up the doors of your mind open up the doors to your mind you look at uh, big companies they understand what i'm telling you right now companies like apple understand it google understands it microsoft understands it everybody uh, you know who's uh, worth their buck understands what i'm telling you right now because if i have to give you an example right uh, first they took away the interface the most important thing earlier we used to communicate completely manually now we have an interface which is your smartphone the second thing the the companies understand is you know that you know what is another interface that we use so they built a smart watch now we've all started using these smart watches uh open up the doors and see what all can happen what is the future of everything around us the future of clothes has anybody thought ever what is the purpose of clothes why do we make it in cotton or silk or any of these uh materials what is actually clothing supposed to do it's supposed to protect us from the environment it's supposed to climatically sort of uh, artificially control the in, the the temperature of the body and so there are companies right now which are researching on how to create clothing which can control your body temperature even in snow look at your shoes maybe tomorrow you'll see shoes which will you know when you walk they'll tell you how much you walk every day uh you look at your watch it's it's following you around look at a door outside right it's a wooden door right now but the future of the door may be uh in the future when you walk through a door you know that you know you're getting scanned for security already in inbuilt into the door systems uh they know who you are how many times people enter exit that is you know one of the possibilities of the future of a door what's the future of a window maybe 
windows. There, there's so many people working on this. There's so many brains right now all across the globe working on this. Uh, windows can actually maybe, you know, what, what do we use windows for? To let the light inside. Uh, what else can be the use, uh, they be used for? You'll be surprised to know a lot of people are working on this right now. How to convert the window itself into a photovoltaic cell to take the energy of the sun that you need inside, that the, the light that you need inside can pass on through, and what you don't need inside can be actually converted into energy and put back into the grid. So, you know, the buildings become self-sufficient. Uh, you know, if, if there's anything that I would want you guys to go back with today is, is to open the, the doors of your mind and think about everything, question everything. Um, specifically coming to buildings and the industry that I speak for, um, let me talk about the future of selling. I would restrict myself to uh, real estate architecture buildings, uh, I, although I can speak about other things. Um, you know, presently, how do you guys buy real estate? Uh, how do you guys, I mean, you, you must have homes, you offices, uh, shopping malls that you guys go to. Some of uh, your parents might be running uh, shops. Uh, presently, it's such an unorganized sector in India, but it's changing rapidly right now. If, if you look at what's going to happen, and I can predict this with, with, with a certain level of... Uh, uh, accuracy within the next five years the future of real estate primary sales is going to be completely turning online and it's going to be turning virtual what do I mean by online and virtual we ourselves are working on something and I can uh, you know give you an example where we ourselves have in the past two months managed to sell completely online over 400 units uh, in one of our projects uh, no human interaction whatsoever. But that's just a small thing. The big deal would be, and uh, the big deal would come in maybe five years down the line, where you can actually be inside that space. You know, I recently bought one of those Oculus systems, uh, you know, where you put them over your eyes and, uh, you know, you can actually be within a space. Uh, that's actually going to be the way you're going to buy real estate because it's not, it's not built as of yet, and you want to experience it, really. Uh, before, before sort of making the decision. Uh, that's going to be one of the things that's going to happen. Uh, there are so many other things, uh, you know, which are happening uh, within the building sector. Uh, one of the, I, I would like to open your, uh, open your eyes to some of the things that are happening, uh, you know, in, in the sphere of construction. And for that, I would request uh, if my friend can play a small video that I have. So this is uh, actually in China. Uh, they've, they've recently set the world record for the fastest construction in the world. Uh, they have managed to build a 57-story building in 19 days. Now, how they've done it is, is just, I mean, it's beyond me. But, uh, but you can see the way they are actually doing it here is, is all prefabrication. Everything is built uh, off the ground. It's built in a factory put in place in so many days, uh, uh, you know, with, with, a, with a lot of, of course, there's a lot of labor and cranes and stuff that are being used. Uh, but this is the kind of future that, that would come to India. We are trying towards it. A lot of other developers are trying towards, uh, you, know, uh, you know, making this, this, this uh, uh, a standard uh, sort of a delivery model. Uh, this shows you the prefabricated factory uh, in the background, you know, where they actually make everything uh, uh, you know, on, on sort of tables and automated systems. I've had the good uh, opportunity to uh, actually go to Germany and visit one of these prefabricated factories where I had, I think, probably a one lakh square feet factory being run by only three people. Those three people, two of which uh, were actually working in, you know, just uh, managing some of the uh, the MEP processes, MEP means uh, mechanical electrical plumbing, putting in the conduits and stuff, and one guy was sitting on the computer. This is how the, the finished building looked after on the 20th day. Completely unimaginable. You can't imagine something like this. How can you make a product like this in, in 19 days? Uh, it's just really, really amazing. Uh, 
but these are things that are happening uh, right now. And, and again, it's, it's because of the fact that somebody is asking themselves the question, how can we make this better? What will happen in the future? Presently, our country, uh, India, uh, is, is largely unorganized in the real estate space. Uh, there is so much more to do in the construction space. There, there, the consumer sentiment gets low because there are frequent problems with delivery uh, of real estate on time. Now, this, what you're seeing it in my background right now, is a 3D printing technology. 3D printing, you might have heard, is already become a commercialized process, but you would probably not have heard that they've actually started building houses within one day each, completely with the use of a 3D printer. Again, mind-boggling. You've just got, it's actually, a, that's the house that they built. Within one day, they built 10 houses with the use of a 3D printer. Really, really mind-boggling. Uh, there's, there's a few other technologies, uh, that, that's one of the, that's actually the new tallest building that's coming up, it's the one kilometer tower in Saudi Arabia. This is going to be the new tallest building in the world uh, after the Burj Khalifa. Again, uh, I, I work with some of the people who are involved in this project, extremely, extremely beautiful project. That's the tallest building that's coming up in North India, that is our project. Uh, and here we are managing to actually achieve the single fastest construction in India till now, which is a seven-day slab cycle, which typically is a 30-day slab cycle uh, you know, across, uh, across the globe. Uh, so so we, we are also making sort of a headwind in, in creating systems, technologies, processes to make construction faster, seamless, more quality-oriented. Uh, I'd also like to request the other video that I have, uh, I, would, I would like to show just to open up uh, you know, perspectives on a few other things. Uh, that's actually a video from, uh, I think, Samsung. The, Samsung is going very, very big on technology uh, as well. So what you see here is, is how everything is getting integrated. Your home is integrated with your watch, is integrated with your phone, uh, your, your, uh, your refrigerator, with the mirrors, your, your the refrigerator is actually telling you what is not there for me in the menu uh, or what is not there in the fridge anymore, and it can order it as well on your behalf. The kitchen tells you what you can cook. The kitchen can tell you what is the recipe to what you want to cook. Um, and largely, it's the interface that's changing. So it's not buttons so much anymore. And the next wave that's going to hit us after the smartphone, which is the present wave that we are in, is going to be artificial intelligence. Uh, that's what's coming up in a very, very big way across uh, the globe in everything that we speak of. Why do we need to press buttons if we can just talk and the other side understands and you know, sort of listens to our commands? Uh, what you see here is, is, is full home automation, you know, completely voice activated. Uh, there is another example that is there after this, you know, where where, where there's an Android watch which is being uh, used to control uh, lights and fans and any, absolutely anything that works with electricity. Uh, this is actually not the future. This is actually the present. It's coming into the present now with the advent of all these uh, smart devices. You can, you can set the, you can, you can talk, uh, okay Google, please uh, reduce the temperature to 24 degrees and it talks back to you. Fine, done. Uh, I've already been using a few of these technologies. There, these are, there are other devices which are coming up, you know, which, which are mic-based devices, which you can plant all across spaces around you. And uh, just speak, and your house has a personality. It speaks back to you. It tells, uh, it tells you what it can do, what it can't do. Smart building management systems are integrating uh, you know, uh, things which are our most important needs, energy, water. Uh, and uh, you know other electronic Wi-Fi based uh, communications. Uh, so in the future, you will see uh, how all the data collection points within a building are getting accumulated at one point, and then all the data is available to you in a very, very easy manner uh, with the use of artificial intelligence technology. Uh, this, uh, again, is a Microsoft home of the future, which they built, I think, about 10, 15 years back. It, to me, I, I don't know how futuristic it looks to you, to me, today, it looks quite outdated because she's still using buttons 
to order uh, wine for herself or to tell the house uh, you know, what kind of lighting she needs. At 10 years back, maybe it looked very, very uh, interesting. But today, things are changing really, really quickly. Things are getting to be a thing of the past uh, extremely, extremely quickly. Uh, but there's another way. So, so she's uh, out of wine. So she's telling the refrigerator, please uh, order the wine. She's going to the television uh, set. And from her refrigerator, she wants to know more about the wine. So the television is playing a video which she, it's pulling from the back end. Uh, it's actually playing the video about the wine which she, which she just ordered. Uh, she's paying online with the use of her thumb, which becomes her unique uh, identity. Uh, it, it has huge applications even in health. So you see uh, this guy who's uh, actually, uh, you know, he's sending his report to the doctor. He's just standing in front of the mirror. The mirror is analyzing his uh, heartbeat and uh, monitors and, every, uh, and blood pressure. That's another way I think things are going to change in buildings. So when you go home, maybe your walls are not going to be looking like this anymore. Maybe the walls are going to turn into screens. Uh, maybe when you go to sleep, you can actually uh, you can actually set that you want to sleep uh, you know, on a beach or you want to sleep uh, tonight under the starlit uh, sky. All that is possible. That's another interesting thing. Uh, these are solar roads. Solar roads is a, is a concept where solar roads is a concept where they say that you know, if you have to do just stop, please. If you have to do energy production, why rely on any, every, anything else? Why can't the buildings themselves be a source of energy? And why can't the roads themselves be source of energy? So there are scientific applications which are happening which can actually turn the roads themselves into a, a gatherer of energy and spread it across uh, to buildings or to automobiles. Uh, this next one uh, is actually uh, artificial photosynthesis leaf that has just been this this work has just happened uh, two months back and you have future applications where you can have entire buildings being covered uh, in in artificial photosynthesis uh, leaves which can actually produce oxygen for the air so your buildings turn into uh, living trees uh, I would end with the Google car which I think uh, Sushant was telling about you know driverless cars. These are already uh, happening in the U.S. People are using it. They have already started using this. Uh, there's lots more to talk about, but I think for today, that's enough for the future of buildings. <laughs>